disciples. Perhaps they were considering Zechariah's prophecy when they asked, Lord, will you at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Jesus answered them, saying, It is not for you to know the times of the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Then as they beheld him, he ascended into heaven. The disciples seemed to watch in confusion, and so two men stood by in white clothing, who said to them, You men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus who is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. The angels seemed to be reassuring the disciples that Jesus would indeed fulfill Zechariah's prophecy, that even as he ascended from the Mount of Olives, he would likewise return, and his feet will stand in that day in the same place he departed. And he destroys Antichrist because it's Antichrist. I believe it's not just Russia, in my opinion, uh, and the Arab uh, nations and Confederacy and so forth. Sure, they're there, but it's the whole world. The United States, to everybody, uh, and uh, they're vying with one another. You know, the kings come from the east. Maybe they can take over at this time. I don't know. It gets to be a whole mess in Armageddon. And God says in, in Ezekiel 38 that He brings the nations there to judge them, to punish them for what they've done to His people Israel. He also is punishing Israel. This is the final punishment for Israel. Uh, Jeremiah 30, verse 7, is called the time of Jacob's trouble, but he will preserve, be, but he will be preserved out of it. <laughs> so God is going to punish the world, and he's going to chastise his people. And then Christ will intervene, or there wouldn't be anybody left on this earth. I mean, we can turn this earth into a sterile bit of dust, not even a microbe, not even a mosquito or a cockroach left. We have the weapons to do that. And that's an amazing prophecy. That's Armageddon. But how will all nations be gathered together against Jerusalem unless they are somehow united in a common cause? Bible researchers believe that cause will be the last day empire prophesied through Daniel and witnessed by the Apostle John. This empire will consist of a one world government, a one world religion, and a world economy all united under a one-world leader, known in the Bible as Antichrist. And you can see it happening before your very eyes. This world church, really, uh, the ecumenical movement, is going to be united with the world government. Now we also have a hierarchy of elitists um, who are steeped in the mystery religions who want power. A very modern, uh, um, a modern embodiment of that would be Hitler, who brought about the Second World War because he wanted power. He was in an occult mystery religion, and he believed that the Aryan super race could take over the world. That we're heading for a world government, there's no doubt that we're, uh, head and, and, and that everything will be controlled with a number that you won't be able to buy or sell and so forth. I mean, we have the computers today to do it. You couldn't have amused. Even imagine what that would mean 100 years ago. The Word of God says that the spirits, the, the demonic world, go forth to the kings of the world and gather them to, together for the battle of the great day of God Almighty, which in the Hebrew tongue is called Armageddon. So that these spirits had an objective, and it is to unite the world and bring the world against Christ in Armageddon. Why do the nations rage and the peoples imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his Christ. So we have got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of organizations that are working, in a sense, networking with each other to bring about a religious philosophy that will ultimately usher in the Antichrist. So when the Bible talks about the man of lawlessness, a one-world government, a one-world religion, you can bank on it. World government has been declared by some of the greatest leaders and influential minds of the last century. The focus of their desire is supposedly world peace. Albert Einstein said, mankind's desire for peace can be realized only by the creation of a world government. Einstein also declared, quote, there is no salvation for civilization or even the human race 
other than the creation of a world government. Meanwhile, Nehru, the leader of India during the days of Mahatma Gandhi, declared, I have long believed the only way peace can be achieved is through world government. We have arrived at a stage where the next step must comprise a world and all its states submitting to the authority of world organization. Mortimer Adler said, world peace is impossible without world government. And Sir Winston Churchill declared, the creation of an authoritative world order is the ultimate aim toward which we must strive. French President Charles de Gaulle seemed adamant when he said, nations must unite in a world government or perish. Walter Cronkite said concerning nuclear devastation that, quote, if we are to avoid that catastrophe, a system of world order, preferably a system of world government, is mandatory. The proud nations someday will see the light and for the common good and their own survival yield up their precious sovereignty, just as America's 13 colonies did two centuries ago. In 1992, Strobe Talbot, President Clinton's Deputy Secretary of State, was quoted in Time magazine saying, in the next century, nations as we know it will be obsolete. All states will recognize a single global authority. National sovereignty wasn't such a great idea after all. In December 2001, Edward Widmer, the president of the Illinois Division of the United Nations Association of the United States said, quote, within 10 years time, you're going to see the beginning of an embryonic world order. Britain's Prime Minister Tony Blair said, quote, globalization has transformed our economies and our working practices. It is a political and security phenomenon. We are all internationalists now, whether we like it or not. We are witnessing the beginnings of a new doctrine of international community. While the quote that seems to consolidate them all comes from Robert Mueller former Assistant Secretary General of the United Nations who said we must move as quickly as possible to a one world government, a one world religion under a one world leader. As to what manner of leadership is under consideration, consider this quote from Paul Henry Spack, the former Secretary General of NATO, who in 1957 said, what we want is a man of sufficient stature to hold the allegiance of the people and to lift us out of the economic morass into which we are sinking. Send us such a man, and be he God or the devil, we will receive him. Late in the 18th century, a group known as the Jacobins who brought about the French Revolution said they were seeking to establish what they called a universal republic or a new world order. That very phrase has come to represent the entire march toward world government, the coming last day empire spoken of by the highest offices in all the world. Robert Kennedy, the former U.S. Attorney General in 1967 said, all of us will ultimately be judged on the effort we have contributed to building a new world order. In October 1967, Richard Nixon was quoted in Foreign Affairs saying, the developing coherence of Asian regional thinking is to evolve regional approaches to development needs and to the evolution of a new world order. A few years later, the New York Times reported that Nixon spoke of the talks as a beginning, merely reiterating the belief he brought to China that both nations share an interest in peace and building a new world order. On July 26, 1968, the Associated Press reported that New York Governor Nelson A. Rockefeller says as president he would work toward international creation of a new world order. In 1976, a new document surfaced that was called the Declaration of Interdependence. It was signed by 32 U.S. Senators and 92 representatives in Washington, D.C. It read, in part, two centuries ago, our forefathers brought forth a new nation. Now we must join with others to bring forth a new world order. 
And Henry Kissinger, in an address before the United Nations in 1975, said, So we say to 